Stop buying bad CPU and GPU combos. Let's get you the best CPU and GPU combo in 2025. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. It's time to update our best CPU and GPU combo 2025 guide with our advice for the later part of 2025. Now that the full RTX 50 series and RX 9000 series graphics cards have launched and we've got tons of pricing changes. Figuring out the best CPU in 2025 and the best GPU in 2025, that's hard enough. But trying to put them together into the best CPU and GPU combo, it's even harder. So we're gonna cover everything that you need to know to get the best value for your gaming PC build in 2025, and we'll make specific product recommendations for every budget level. If you get value out of this video, please give it a like, and of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. Now, the number one thing that you need to understand to get the best CPU and GPU combo in 2025, it's bottlenecking. Now, this means that one of our components is limiting our performance. When this happens, the only way to get more performance, more FPS, it's to upgrade that component that's bottlenecking us. For a gaming PC build, the typical bottleneck is the CPU versus the GPU. If our CPU cannot keep up with our GPU, then increasing the speed of the CPU is gonna give us more FPS. But if our GPU is our bottleneck, then getting a bigger, faster GPU instead is gonna increase our performance. The CPU is more likely to bottleneck us when we're pushing huge amounts of frames, and our GPU is usually the bottleneck when we turn up the resolution from like 1080p to 1440p to 4K, including if the GPU does not have enough VRAM to run the latest AAA titles on release at higher or ultra settings. But this is one area that people get wrong and they buy the wrong CPU and GPU combo. No matter what, our system is always going to have a bottleneck. It's our job as PC builders to understand how to maximize our PC build performance, whether that's in gaming, it's in streaming, video editing, or other heavy multi-threaded workloads. Once we figure that out, we wanna spend most of our money on the component that's bottlenecking our performance. So our goal for a gaming PC build in 2025, it's to maximize our FPS for our available budget. Now, repeated testing, it continues to show you're going to maximize your FPS when you get the biggest, fastest graphics card you can afford, then just spend enough on your CPU that it doesn't overly bottleneck the GPU. The less you have to spend, the more important it is to get the best CPU and GPU balance. Of course, the term budget, it's very important here. Obviously, if you had unlimited money, then of course you just get the fastest CPU, GPU, SSD, and everything else, and you'd spend five to maybe eight grand or more on the fastest gaming PC possible. But most of you out there, you gotta set budget, so nailing your CPU and GPU GPU combo, it's gonna get you the most value for your money. In 2025, VRAM bottlenecks for GPUs are also worth considering. While 12 gigs of VRAM, it's still enough for most 1440p gaming, turning on upscaling, like DLSS, it does use more VRAM, and turning on heavy ray tracing uses even more VRAM itself. Thus, going from a graphics card like an RTX 5070 12 gigabyte GPU up to an RX 9070 XT 16 gigabyte or RTX 5070 Ti 16 gigabyte, that can also have added benefits to consider. This is especially true for more budget builders considering an eight gigabyte graphics card or even moving to 10 or 12 gigabytes that might allow them to improve their 1440p, possibly even 1080p gameplay experience by going up to high or ultra settings. Let's jump into our recommendations for best CPU and GPU combo for gaming in 2025. Now, Everything is linked down in the video description along with resources like our build guide list for most popular CPUs and our how to build a PC playlist with our how to and buying guides. Every month we do a video on the best CPU to buy and the best graphics card to buy based on the latest pricing and availability and I've linked that playlist as well. For graphics cards, we're gonna be considered ones that we can purchase new at retail right now. That's the RTX 50 series, the RX 9000 series, and the ARC B series, along with a couple of low-end graphics cards from previous generations for budget builds. For CPUs, we're gonna look at the Ryzen 9000 and 7000 series and the 5000 series for budget builds. In 2025, I just don't recommend CPUs that are PCIe Gen 3 only. That's the Ryzen 5500, 5600G, or 5700 non-X. And you can check out our PC parts to avoid in 2025 video for more on why. On the Intel side, we'll look at the Intel Core Ultra 200 CPUs and 13th and 14th gen unlocked parts for mid-range builds and the 12th gen Intel CPUs for budget builds. We're not gonna look at the i3 parts, however, they're just too weak in 2025. Starting off at the budget level, you can build a gaming PC right now for around $650 with all new parts. On the AMD Ryzen side, our best options of the Ryzen 5600 variants, like the Ryzen 5600, 5600X, 
XT and XT, and they all perform the same, and they come with included stock cooler. Honorable mention to the 5800 XT for about $140, which is a tiny bit faster and also has a good included stock cooler. We're gonna pair this with a roughly $100 B550 motherboard like the MSI Pro B550M-VC Wi-Fi or the ASRock B550M Pro RS. Now, unfortunately, this platform no longer has an upgrade path as the Ryzen 5000 X3D CPUs they've gone completely out of stock. My pick for the best budget gaming CPU is the i5-12400F with a good included stock cooler. We're gonna pair this with a B660 or B760 motherboard that uses DDR4 RAM for about $100, like the Gigabyte B760M DS3H or the ASUS B760M-AYW Wi-Fi. In the future, we'll drop in an i5-14600K into this PC and we'll perform it similar to the Ryzen 5800X3D or the Ryzen 7600X. You can also consider the i5 i5-12600K, i5-13400 or 14400 instead, especially if they go on sale, but they aren't that much faster for gaming and they need at least a budget tower air cooler for another $20, so figure that into your cost as well. Whether you go Intel or Ryzen, we want to pair them with a $65 kit of 2 by 16 gigabyte DDR4 3200 CL16 RAM. DDR4 3600CL18 is also fine here as it's the same speed and DDR4 RAM does seem to be drying up and going up in price. This brings the total cost of these platforms to between $275 and $295. For a GPU, most of the cheap graphics cards began around $230 at the time of filming, with something like the Intel Arc B570 10GB for $240, or the Arc B580 12GB for $260. Both these GPUs are heavy on the CPU usage, but the CPUs we're considering should be fine at 1440p. AMD Radeon options start around the currently $220 RX 6600 8GB and include the $270 RX 9060 XT 8GB. NVIDIA options start around $250 for the RX. RTX 5050, or slightly better, if you can still fight it, $260 RTX 3060 12GB GPU. Pricing is really volatile right now in the best graphics card under $300 price range, so check out our monthly best graphics card buying guide for the best value right now. For a maximum graphics card for these CPUs, I'd look to the RX 9060 XT 16GB, currently retailing for about $360, or the RTX 5060 Ti 16GB graphics card for about $430. You can keep going, of course, but we do start to run into diminishing returns for CPU heavy titles or competitive titles like Marvel Rivals, and I would recommend upping the CPU platform. The next CPU up that I would look to on the AMD side, either the Ryzen 7600X or the 9600X, sitting around $180. In fact, the 9600X, it was as low as $156 during Amazon Prime Day earlier this year, but its typical price, it's a little closer to 200 bucks. We've got build guides for both the 7600X and the 9600X on the channel, which are under our PC build guide playlist, linked down in the video description. I recommend a value-oriented B650, B650E, or B850 motherboard for about $130, $250, like the ASRock B850 M-X Revision 2 Wi-Fi, it's $130, or the MSI Pro B650M-A for about $145. These CPUs are incredibly easy to cool. They really only need a budget tower air cooler for like $20, like the recently discounted id cooling frozen A410 SE, the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Pro, or the Thermorite Assassin 120 SE. On the Intel side, we've seen big price cuts to the i5-14600K and 13600K. They're now regularly about $190, but they do sometimes go on sale for much cheaper. And skip the terrible Core Ultra 5 CPUs, they're just too weak and expensive. For the i5 CPUs, we want a good B660, B760, Z690, or Z790 motherboard that supports DDR5 with occasional value picks like the $120 ASRock B760M Riptide, but more often you'll need to spend about $150 on something like the MSI Pro B760-VC Wi-Fi, as stock of these LGA 1700 motherboards, it's drying up. You'll want a dual tower air cooler and you can pick up a great value for around $35, including the id cooling A620 Pro SE or the Thermorite Peerless Assassin. Regardless of going Intel or Ryzen here, my RAM recommendations, they're the same. Get a two by 16 gigabyte kit of DDR5 6000 CL30 RAM, it's about $85 to $90 and it's the best value choice for both platforms. Now between the two platforms, my strong recommendation, it's the Ryzen platform. Given its future upgradability to an X3D CPU, it's cheaper, but the 14600K, it does remain a good hybrid option if you also do professional level work and you need more CPU horsepower. 
though it lacks future upgradability. The total platform price at this tier is $440 to $465. That represents about $165 to $190 in cost above the previous CPU tier of performance. For our GPU combo, I would look at a minimum of an RX 9060 XC 16 gigabyte, RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte, or the ARC B580 12 gigabyte GPUs. These CPUs, they're great performers for the price overall. In particular, I think they pair really well with mid-range to upper-end 1440p graphics cards like the RX 9070 16GB and RX 9070 XT 16GB and the RTX 5070 12GB as well as the RTX 5070 Ti 16GB graphics cards. You could push these up to an RTX 5080, but at that point, I definitely think it's time to move on to a higher performance gaming CPU, particularly if you're playing a lot of competitive titles like CS2 or Battlefield 6. Jumping up to our upper mid-range CPU and GPU combos, and we basically have two options here. At current pricing for this budget level, the best gaming CPU, it's the Ryzen 7700, Ryzen 7700X, or the Ryzen 9700X, which can be had for anywhere between $250 up to $300. Now for gaming on the AMD Ryzen side, we do not want to go to the more expensive 12 or 16 core count non-X3D CPUs. We just don't pick up any more gaming performance over the eight core models. In fact, we might lose some. But if you're production oriented, feel free to consider the Ryzen 9 CPUs like the 9900X or 9950X. For Intel, we've got the current Core Ultra 7 265K, which has received steep price cuts down to $280 and below. And you can still consider the i7 14700K. These CPUs will bump up average FPS by around 5% over the previous tier at 1440p using a mid range or high end graphics card. So this is not a a huge increase and the most impact is likely going to be seen in improved 1% low frame rates. For Ryzen motherboards, I have increased our spending to an ATX size B650, B650 E, or B850 motherboard, like the Gigabyte B850 Eagle or B850 Gaming X Wi Fi, but you could use any of the budget to mid range motherboards from the previous tier. For the Core Ultra 7, the motherboards are quite good and you can use a B860 or Z890. And for the i7 14700K, we're using the same motherboards as the previous here. For RAM, we're sticking with DDR5 6000 CL30. It's just optimal for Ryzen and it's the best price to performance for any of the Intel systems. For Ryzen CPU coolers, we want a dual tower air cooler for around $35 as we do want to turn on Precision Boost Overdrive. And I've bumped this up a little bit for the Intel CPUs as they run hotter and we might want to consider a good liquid cooler instead. For our GPU combo, I'd look at a minimum of an RX 9070 16 gigabyte or RTX 5070 12 gigabyte GPU. You do not want to go to a lesser GPU here as this is the tier I'm most worried about people oversizing their CPU at the expense of their GPU. Now you can take these combos all the way up to an RX 9070 XT and beyond to the RTX 5080 or RTX 5090. Of course, we hit a lot of bottleneck with almost any gaming CPU that is not an X3D CPU with the RTX 5090. So at that point, we really wanna move up in terms of our CPU performance to the ultimate tier. Now let's look at the current top tier of gaming CPUs in 2025 with the ultimate being the Ryzen 9800 X3D and I will mention the 9950 X3D as well if you do a lot of production or professional work that would benefit from more than eight CPU cores. There is, of course, no gaming performance difference between those two CPUs. We have seen rumors of a new 16 core dual X3D CPU. You can consider it if it launches, but coming in just behind the 9800X3D, it's the Ryzen 7800X3D, which saw a huge price drop in the middle of 2025. At this performance tier, Intel, they just don't have anything competitive. The Ryzen 9800X3 or 9950X3D, they're gonna offer at least 10 to 15% better gaming performance with an RTX 5090 at 1440p ultra detail settings, even more if you're using lowered settings in competitive titles. And the Ryzen 7800X3D, it's not far behind. We've got build guides for both the Ryzen 9800X3D and Ryzen 7800X3D linked down in the PC parts and build video playlist. We're gonna pair our Ryzen 9800X3D or 7800X3D CPUs with a B650E, X670, B850, or X870 motherboard for the PCIe Gen 5 GPU slot, just in case it's ever relevant. So a motherboard like the Gigabyte B850 Eagle for $164, or the ASUS Tough B650E Plus for $189. If you're using a 9950X3D, just make sure you get a higher end motherboard with good VRMs for the 16 core CPU. 
There's a lot of good options from the B850 Tomahawk Wi-Fi and the ASUS B850 Tough around $215 and good quality X870 production oriented motherboards, they begin around $260. Now to cool the eight core X3D CPUs, we want any of the dual tower air coolers from the previous tier, like the Thermite Peerless Assassin or id Cooling A620 SE. My cooling recommendation for the Ryzen 9950X3D, it's to go for a high performance liquid all-in-one cooler for around $100, like the 300 160 millimeter Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro or the Montec Hyperflow 360. For RAM, we could use DDR5 6000 CL30 kits, but I did spend an extra 20 bucks going to DDR5 6000 CL28 instead because we're running out of things to upgrade. The 7800X3D upgrade is an additional $155 over the previous tier, with the 9800X3D upgrade costing $274 more, and the 9950X3D coming in, it's almost twice as expensive as the previous tier of CPUs. For our GPU combos, for a minimum, I would recommend the Radeon RX 9070 16 gigabyte or RTX 5070 12 gigabyte, and that's primarily for the Ryzen 7800X3D. For the 9800X3D, I would recommend a minimum of an RTX RX 5070 Ti 16GB or RX 9070 XT 16GB. Either of these CPUs are going to pair really well with an RTX 5080 or an RTX 5090, though honestly if I'm spending $2,500 to $3,000 on my RTX 5090, I'm probably going to spend the extra $100 and get the Ryzen 9800X3D. Of course we've heard rumors that AMD might launch a bigger GPU and obviously any of these CPUs would go well with that should that happen. Or should Nvidia launch a 5070 Ti Super or 5080 Super or some kind of 5090 Super or Ti version. Congratulations, you own one of the fastest gaming PCs on planet Earth. But what about production or creator workloads that need more CPU power? Well, for these use cases, we want more balance, but it does depend heavily on the types of programs that we're using. Take video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Well, going up from six cores to eight cores, that does help. So does increasing your GPU power for the rendering and the export. So oversizing your CPU at the expense of your GPU, it's actually gonna hurt overall performance. And we see this in a lot of professional applications. I've linked all the CPUs and GPUs mentioned in this video down in the description. Check those out for current pricing and availability in your region. And of course, check out our build guides for specific CPUs in the PC build guide video playlist and all of our other how-to videos like Best RAM for Gaming 2025, Best SSD for Gaming, Best Ryzen Motherboard, and of course, how to build a PC and how to set up your PC after you build it. If you got value out of this video, please give a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, and of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. And we'll catch you on the next one.